Hello. Uh, Aprilite uh, sent me one of their flashes to do a review on. This is the YH500N. It's uh, made for the Nikons. And uh, you can see it here, it's uh, mounted on my D600 with a 50 millimeter lens. Um, as far as price goes, it looks like on Amazon they go for about $70 currently right now. Uh, and, it's, uh, and you can also see there's a fairly beefy flash. Um, so I, I took a, a few shots here. Uh, you can see it compared to uh, the SB900. Uh, the newest uh, Nikon variant is the 910, but I only have a 900. And then also the SB28, which is the, the small one. So you can see it's actually a little bit bigger than, or at least as big as the uh, SB900. It's a uh, fully cap uh, compatible TTL, and uh, it also you can use it with the commander mode. If you're not familiar with that, it's a way to remotely fire a flash, trigger it. You actually use your built-in um, flash here. Uh, it does a, a pulse, and it actually will trigger this flash. And I'll show you uh, this, the settings here shortly. Um, as far as, uh, as, as, as features go, it's pretty good featured. I mean, uh, it has... Uh, you, know, you can see it has a pretty good range of motion. Um, great for doing bounce flashes. Uh, the rear panel um, is pretty intuitive. The, it has a little bit of a diffuser and a, and a white card similar to like the S, SB900 does. Uh, as far as the feel of the flash, um, maybe not quite as robust as the 900, but uh, with the 900 or the 910 now, you're paying $550 versus 70, so you're going to expect um, some differences there. But other than that, I didn't feel as particularly chintzy. Uh, the buttons do feel fairly solid, even though you could tell that they're not quite the same, um, maybe build quality. But it, I would trust this flash to be fairly durable and long-lasting. Uh, it takes four AA batteries, just like any other flash. Um, it also can accept uh, a battery pack, and I believe it's the Nikon battery pack that it accepts here, uh, which is actually very handy. So if you are you want to use this for wedding photography, uh, you have that option, and it's pretty vital to have a, uh, a battery pack option. Uh, it has a built-in uh, heat protection, so if you overheat the flash while you're doing a lot of shooting, uh, it'll automatically shut off, which is a good safety feature because otherwise you can really cook the flash. Uh, it also uh, allows for strobe and uh, and some manual settings. It zooms. You can it it's fully compatible with the zoom on the Nikon. So when you're zooming in and out, you can hear uh, the flash zooming in and out. Um, I also tested it on my SB or sorry, not SB, my D3300, and it worked great. It worked both on the the D600 and the D3300 that I had was able to test. Um, you can see some of the test shots here uh, using a model in the barn. Not an ideal location to shoot, but it was what I had available. And, uh, um, and the, the flash actually operated quite well. Um, if you're looking at getting into, the, into flash photography or buying a flash, the, this is definitely a, a great value at being you know, $70 to $80 versus uh, the Nikon SP700 flash is like $300 ish dollars. Uh, like I said, the, the SB910 is, uh, is $550, and that's pretty pricey. Um, but with this one, you get a fully compatible flash system and still um, for, for a pretty good price. And then if you want to eventually get into if you, you know, playing with the Nikon's um, flashes and you decide you want to invest that much money into a flash, then you have that option. But at least you have something here that is works um, as well and uh, and um, but not quite as expensive. Here's the back of the flash. You can see um, showing 105 millimeters just because I have a manual 50 millimeter lens on it. Um, but you can see you can manually adjust zoom, but it'll do it automatically if you have an automatic uh, lens on the camera. And you go into the different modes, the strobe, sleeve one, sleeve two, through the lens metering and then back to manual. ISO to auto sense from the camera, um, which is pretty handy. And uh, I mean, it's overall, it's pretty easy to use and 
you can tell that it's kind of plain Jane. The buttons aren't, don't feel weak or, or anything like that. Um, I mean, I, I expect that this flash would, would last me a good while. So um, I'm pretty happy to have this in my inventory now. Okay, now looking at the back of the D600, if you're wondering how to get to command mode for the flash, basically you go into, you know, the settings, custom settings menu, bracketing flash. You go to uh, flash control for built-in flash, go into commander mode, and then you can set your different setups. You can have built-in flash, group A, group B, um, all set up. These are all set up for uh, through the lens metering, TTL, that's what that stands for. Um, so uh, you can see that you can switch to different setups, different compensations here, um, depending on what you're doing in your setup. Uh, and again, the way this has to be fired is the built-in flash, fill flash has to be up and firing and has to be visible by the other flashes. So that's just to give you a quick rundown of commander mode, something you, you're not too familiar with, you're gonna have to play with a bit more on your own. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe. I have a number already on my channel. You'll see links here shortly uh, to access some of those. And uh, I have some links down below, a Facebook page, blog, uh, a link to Aperlite's site, a link to Amazon. Um, and uh, if you have any constructive comments, uh, or critiques, please leave them in the comments section. If you have any questions, uh, I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Um, thank you very much. And again, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye.